All right, folks, today I'm finally going to talk about the Kusari Gama. A number of people over the years have asked me about it, and uh, one of my patrons, Ace the Supervillain, has been fascinated with it recently, and he put together a playlist of videos that he said he found surprisingly plausible. All I've got is a sickle, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you some pictures of originals in museums. I'm not going to go into great detail about the historical background, because I haven't dug that deeply into it. I'm more interested in the practical application, but I did find a book by Ellis M. Dewar, if I pronounced that correctly, uh, who talks about the Kusari Gama, and uh, apparently it was neither a ninja weapon nor a peasant weapon as such, and if you think about it, the reasoning here makes perfect sense as an agricultural tool. You want something that's as light as possible so you can swing it all day without fatigue, and you want a very thin blade that can cut grass and wheat effectively. All of that, a war pick or battle sickle or whatever, is a very different kind of beast that needs to be um, designed differently. He refers to the Japanese martial artist and researcher Yawa Yumio, who hypothesized that this weapon derived from the Jingama, which is a tool that was generally kept in barns because it was used to cut the ropes tethering the horses in case of a fire in the barn so you can lead the horses out. And he thought that it was combined with a konpi, which is a chain with a weight at the end, which you would hold in one hand and then the jingama in the other hand to defend horses against thieves or arsonists etc. So then the next logical step would be to connect the two. And there's different types of kusarigama. The chain can be connected either to the bottom of the handle or to the sickle blade. He points out that it was not a battlefield weapon, which makes perfect sense because you wouldn't be able to use it in a formation with multiple people. And also it's not really an anti-armor weapon. I mean, depending on the size of the weight at the end, I suppose, you could potentially use it as a flail. But a lot of them seem like the weight is of moderate size and not extremely heavy. So it seems to have been designed as a weapon against a single opponent with a sword, specifically. So you can entrap the sword and use the sickle to both parry and attack. He argues that the weight at the end of the chain is of limited effectiveness, which I would agree with. With. I'm having messed around with a Castlevania style chain whip. All I put at the end was, was just a lock. That's all I had at the time. So it's not amazingly effective in that regard. But a lot of the ones that I see don't seem necessarily to weigh that much more than heavy duty lock. Again, there's different shapes and sizes. Now, I found a video on the channel Pim's Projects about the Castlevania whip, and he made a much better one, and uh, figured out a quite effective way to use it, uh, where the, the weight actually goes forward, pretty much like you see in, in the game. I'm assuming that's due to the heavier weight, what I use probably just wasn't heavy enough at the end. So you can do that, and that looked quite effective, really. So if you if you have the right kind of weight and you use it well enough with proper technique, this can certainly be quite useful. Again, not necessarily lethal unless you happen to hit the head. If you hit somebody in the chest with one of those, they're, they're not going to go down, but you know, you have all kinds of reach and any hit, of course, any kind of injury to the opponent is good, <laughs> in short. Since Japanese arms and armor are not my specialty, I figured I should get the input of someone who won't butcher the pronunciation of Japanese words the way I do, and who can provide some more background info. So I asked a certain Mega Weeb, uh, I mean, me Megatron? Metatron? Just kidding, bro. Thanks for chiming in. Konnichiwa. Hey Skalagrim, thank you so much for having me here, and hello to everyone! Alright, let's talk a little bit about the Ksari Gama, definitely an unusual weapon. You've got the Ksari, the Kama and the Fundo, so the chain, sickle and weight respectively. But there were quite a lot of different typologies. Now Scala has already shown quite a few on this video, but for example in the more Okinawan version of this weapon, you've got sometimes two uh, sickles or two Kama connected by a rope or a chain, which is already quite interesting. Other times the two kama, so the two sickles are asymmetrical, one 
been smaller than the other. As we begin talking about the little different pieces, the kama part, which is actually the sickle, well, that's the easiest one, it's just a farming tool. That's what it is. You use it to reap crops and most likely, you know, you can imagine a Japanese farmer, he's walking around and then he's being attacked by either a bandit slash, you know, samurai maniac and they want to kill him and he's got the kama. Of course, he's going to use it as an improvised self-defense implement and that's what the kama is at first. So we've got two different hypotheses about the origin. On the one hand, a tool used to cut free horses and defend them. On the other hand, the agricultural sickle. Uh, which of them is more accurate or if it could be a bit of both, I have no idea. The Kusarigama, I want to detach it from the peasants now, because this is an actual weapon that is trying to be improved as, as such. And if you look at Edo period examples, you will find some that will have full lead blades and forged blades, which already gives you an idea. They are trying to improve it. And sometimes you have got versions that have got metal protection for the hand. And interestingly enough, they're actually further up in the weapon, suggesting that there are many possible different ways to grip it and that's supported by the way it's used in Okinawa and Kobudo. Now the fact that they start attaching the chain at the bottom or at the top depending on the style really tells me that they are trying to develop this weapon even further. Okay, so it's a real weapon, but when was it created? Well, the repertoire of moves and techniques that have to do with the Kusarigama go all the way back to Koryu. Now Koryu are the traditional schools so the traditional martial arts, so anything that predates the major restoration of 1868 and possibly also the ban of carrying weapons of 1876. Anything created before that in terms of martial arts is a koryu. And lots of schools such as the Arakiryu, the Shingenryu, Ishingryu, they all have Kusarigama techniques. And the foundation of these styles goes all the way back to the Sengoku period and for some of these schools even to the late Muromachi period. So if I had to take my uneducated guess, no one really knows when to specifically pinpoint it in time, but I want to say 1500, so definitely Muromachi period. Some of these Kusarigama had a chain slash rope that was all the way up to three meters long, which means that Theoretically, you could functionally keep a pole weapon wielder at bay with this weapon. Now, given, I'd rather be the pole weapon wielder, I'd like to mention. I mean, I would definitely prefer a Yari or a Naginata over a Kusarigama, but it's still interesting that you can keep them at bay and make it harder for them to step in with such a weapon. And now let's close it with the most controversial question. Was it a specifically designed ninja weapon or shinobi weapon? No. I'm not saying that historically no shinobi whatsoever ever touched a kusarigama. No, it probably did happen. But was it specifically made for the shinobi no mono? There's no historical evidence to back that one up and the association between the kusarigama and the ninja is relatively modern. But thank you so much for listening to me blabbering. Back to Skalagrim. Off I go. All right, thanks Metatron. It's good to have the extra information about the historical background. So let's get back to function and practical use. Okay, so let's take a look at some of those videos. So here's a demonstration. Keep swinging the chain around. So this is the, the type with the chain connected to the blade, as you can see here. So the nice thing about that is you can use the entire thing with one hand. You can actually you know, twirl the chain by just swinging the, um, the sickle around. So here you've got a parry against a sword. The nice thing is with the sickle, you can use it the same way as an axe. You can hook and uh, you can control the opponent's blade that way. Also note there's a guard on here, a hand guard. It being a demonstration is going to be compliant, but I like that they do it properly. You know, they both move at the same rate of speed. In fact, they move pretty close to full speed. So here the Kusarigama user basically scares the swordsman away by swinging that chain. It would be quite difficult to, to parry and catch with the sword without it wrapping around. Speaking of wrapping around, so he wraps it around the foot. Now here's a drawback that I see of the type that has the chain connected to the blade or to the sickle in general. It could also be to the, the handle. So you see right here, it's wrapped around so far that he only has a little bit of, of length to work with. So that limits what you can do 
with the sickle if you've wrapped it around the opponent and now it's you know tethered to the opponent with with this much room how are you going to use the sickle effectively so if it's attached to the handle you can probably still use the sickle more effectively so again he blocks the sword with the sickle then he wrenches it around and then he wraps the chain around the neck now this this i think is, is, is a bit of an odd follow-up like here just just cut him in the head <laughs> like you know just bring the sickle down on his head or his neck or whatever just attack with the sickle you're already right in position there's really no reason here to use the chain but for the demonstration just to show how you can use the chain fair enough okay here we've got naginata versus kusarigama and they're both wearing protective gear so this should be a more functional demonstration with more resistance i'm assuming yeah exactly that's what i'd like to see so the the fighter with the naginata is actually attacking for you know in earnest and you know with one of of the two sickles the defender catches it and then moves in that's exactly what you want to do and then he <laughs> keeps entangling them so that's <laughs> that's exactly what you want to do you need to defend against the naginata because you, you need to get past the point and then rush in immediately because as soon as you're there the naginata is at a huge disadvantage and yeah especially if you wrap them up and also what i really like here the naginata fighter is drawing a dagger sidearm using it it's exactly what you want to do if you have a polearm you pretty much need some kind of sidearm be it a dagger or a short sword or something because your opponent is going to do want to do exactly this get past your polearm and get to grappling and then you need something something short to deploy so the interesting thing here is there is a kusarigama in the main hand and then there's the sickle or kama i guess in the off hand which makes a lot of sense in this case now this honestly i don't think would have worked uh in in a real fight with an actual steel naginata because considering how hard a polearm hits you really can't stop that with one hand it's just not happening this i'm pretty sure this naginata cut would have blown through and hit anyway but uh yeah again moving in attacking with it now, i do have to <laughs> i do have to wonder if the chain could sometimes entangle the user as well here it's it's really mainly the opponent so that works out quite well and yeah, so if you can wrap it around their legs that's going to be very useful you can basically use it as a bola you know entangle the legs probably pull them off their feet things like that entangle the arms here we've got a practice kusarigama against a katana so hits him on the head with it this should probably be full score this should this should score as a head hit because if you smack someone in the head with with a weight like that at the end of the chain yeah they're probably going down or at least they're going to struggle to continue the fight so that's the danger here and he's actually doing a really good job evading it there <laughs> That's almost a matrix dodge right there. And it moves in immediately. Then we get the rope wrapped around. <laughs> it's still wrapped around his hand. So that certainly works. It's pretty interesting to see here. And it's not the only thing you have. You still have the sickle to use to defend. Because if you think about it, just the chain with with a with a weight or a an extremely long flare or something cannot defend basically in short the idea of blocking a sword cut with the chain worries me a little bit i imagine if you were to receive a committed full powered blow with a sword on the chain there's going to be so much force going to the chain that you may have trouble holding onto it so the chain might start to slip through your hands and then 
you know, basically extend and collapse inward. So you might not be able to actually stop that compared to a rigid object with which to block. You could say with excellent grip strength, if you hold on to it really tightly and keep the chain as taut as possible, you might be able to get away with that. But if you assume high strength, then what if the, the swordsman also is very strong and delivers a particularly powerful strike with the sword? I really doubt you would be able to stop that fully while being safe. But of course, without testing it, it's just speculation. So take that with a grain of salt. But with this, absolutely, especially if it's reinforced, you know, if it's some... Um, if you got iron reinforcement, langets, uh, iron bands, things like that on a solid oak shaft, for example, yeah, you can absolutely stop a sword cut with this, particularly again, if you have that guard at the end, which I quite like. Not all of them have it, but that is extremely useful. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good way to keep the swordsman at bay. He has to move in because he has less range than the chain, but he doesn't want to, of course, because it's extremely hard to evade or parry this. Okay, let's check out one more. There we go, so we get the rope. Okay. There's a bit too much of a pause here in between after wrenching the sword. You know, here the, uh, the, swords, the swordsman is just standing there. Here it's used as more of a distraction, I think. So you make the opponent sidestep to evade that strike with the rope, then hooking onto the sword, attacking the offhand, and then the leg. There it's wrapped around. Oh yeah, I like that one. So it's, it's wrapped around the sword, and then she steps on the rope to pull it down. Yeah, I can see that. So yeah, I can definitely see this being an effective weapon. There are some things to consider, of course, like for example, if a, a, an opposing swordsman cuts down with both hands, are, are you going to be able to stop that with one hand? You know, if it's the opponent is strong and delivers a, a cut with good structure that really follows through, you may not be able to stop that with just one hand. It may just, you know, blow through, basically. But if, there's other ways to do it. For example, if you sweep it aside, if you basically cut into the opponent's sword cut and deflect it off to the side rather than meeting the force head on, that can absolutely work. Sure, this is a very short weapon. Uh, they, they come at different lengths. I've seen some Kusarigama that are relatively long, although the Jingama seems to be longer in general. But either way, it's a relatively short weapon against a sword. Of course, you're at a disadvantage there, but you have the chain, the weighted chain, to keep them at bay with, so that can make up for that. And especially if you're using two sickles, then you have more opportunities for parrying. In fact, if you have to block, do a static block with two, both of them, so you can use both arms, that's an option. And uh, once you are able to move in, now of course you have the huge advantage because a short weapon like this, close quarters is going to be devastating. Speaking of devastating, I mean, I've, I've tested this one here, which just goes straight through padded armor as if it wasn't there. And uh, that's despite this really being the less effective type, because this is curved. Uh, if you use a straight war pick, basically, it concentrates all that force more effectively and penetrates extremely deeply. So it's a devastating weapon. Can also be used against armor of varying kinds, either against soft or, or sort of medium armor where it punches right through, or you could possibly target the gaps of the armor in case of plate. So yeah, this is my opinion based on what I'm seeing without having handled it myself. But to be honest, that wouldn't make that much of a difference because I'm not trained in the use. So, you know, I, I wouldn't really get that much more of an impression necessarily than commenting on videos. So hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.